So what happens when you connect four ohm speakers to cheap AV receivers or cheap two channel receivers? That's the question we're gonna be answering in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics. I wanna answer this very important question because I get it all the time. People wanna have four ohm speakers on cheap, inexpensive receivers whether they be two-channel receivers or multi-channel receivers, they want to know what happens. They want to know what the net effect is by hooking up a pair of four-ohm speakers or two pairs of eight-ohm speakers in parallel, which will give you four-ohms equivalent, to an AV receiver, to a two-channel receiver. Well, the short answer is if it's a really cheap, lightweight receiver with not a lot of heatsink area, there's probably two scenarios that'll happen. Either the receiver will shut off as you turn the volume up on a low impedance load, which is mostly what happens, or it'll current limit, meaning that it won't give you as much power as you think. So let's talk about what an amplifier is supposed to do. An ideal amplifier should double its power with having load impedance. That's what an ideal voltage source does. So if you had an amplifier that's rated at 100 watts a channel and 8 ohms, theoretically you should get close to 200 watts when driving a 4 ohm load. That happens on the very best amplifiers. You can see in the measurements that we've done on amplifiers like the Class A 2 channel amp, the CT2300, which I love, that amplifier doubled down with having load impedance. But that's a really killer, very expensive amplifier with a big power supply, big heatsink area. You don't get that kind of power. You don't get that kind of finesse, that kind of engineering prowess. You don't get that in an inexpensive receiver, especially a two channel receiver. In this, in this topic, I want to talk about, I saw a video from another YouTuber that was saying, oh my God, this $100 Sony receiver is an audiophile dream machine. You can plug two pairs of speakers into it simultaneously and run your whole house. You can't do that. This is why measurements matter. This is why being objective matters. That same receiver that this guy gushed over, if you look at the measurements from Audio Science Review, the receiver did okay in eight ohms, but it could not drive a four ohm load, it would shut down. And I've seen the same thing. I measured a Yamaha years ago, a Yamaha 8, A860 from the Avantage line. The measurements were pretty decent into eight ohms, but when it ran a four ohm load, you saw like this Nike swoosh symbol. As you got to its max power, it started current limiting. So that 200 watts you think you're gonna get in four ohms, you're lucky if that thing is driving more than maybe 100 watts. And if you're doing it over a sustained period of time for a really low impedance load, you're gonna be current limiting. You could potentially damage that product. Now I know what someone's gonna say down below. They're gonna say, well, let's just use the impedance switch. Let's set it to four ohms and our, all our problems are solved. That again is not true, my friends. You've known for over the last couple of years when I did those videos back when Hugo was on the channel, we did a whole video on the impedance selector switches, how you should never use them, always leave them on the eight ohm setting. The only reason why that impedance selector switch is there is so that receiver could get a UL stamp that it's safe to drive a four ohm load because it's power limiting. As soon as when you flip that switch to four ohms, you're cutting your power down sometimes down to maybe 25 watts, maybe a quarter of the rated power at eight ohms when you select that peed and switch to the low setting. Never use that setting. That's only there for UL test certification. No other purpose to it. That's how the receiver manufacturer can cheat and say that their receiver can drive a four ohm load when it really can't. And the reason why it can't, again, is when you're dealing with a budget product, there's not a lot of heat dissipation. They don't have enough heat sink area, especially if it's, a high, if it's a high channel count receiver, like a seven or nine channel receiver, and it's using small heat sinks. Their power output devices just can't drive enough current. They can't dissipate that power. Usually the power supplies are undersized, so that voltage that comes out of that transformer will saturate, and it just can't handle those low impedance loads. So here's what I recommend. If you are going to run low impedance speakers, and let's, let's also mention the fact, if you get a speaker that's rated nominally at eight ohms or nominally at four ohms, it's not really an eight ohm or a four ohm load. That impedance fluctuates with frequency. If the loudspeaker manufacturer is honest, they'll rate that spe speaker to an IEC standard, which says that that speaker can drop more than 80% of its nominal rating between 
300 hertz and 3 kilohertz. Okay, but that's not always the case. We've seen many 8 ohm speakers that dip down to the 4 or 5 ohm rating, and they honestly should be rated as a 4 ohm speaker. Some of the manufacturers will rate them as 6 ohm speakers to get around it. But my point is, if you take two 8 ohm speakers and you put them in parallel, which is what this YouTuber was recommending, that 8 ohm load now becomes a 4 ohm load to the receiver, and that's what's gonna cause either current limiting or it's gonna shut down the receiver, or over long term, because of extra heat dissipation that that receiver can't really do well, it's gonna reduce the longevity of the product. And the one thing I don't want you guys to do is overheat a product. I don't want you to current limit either, because in some cases, when you flip that switch to four ohms, that receiver is gonna clip sooner. So what's gonna happen is that nice sinusoidal uh, a wave, that music wave front, is gonna be more like, more like a square wave. And what happens when you have a square wave with a long duty cycle? You could fry a tweeter because that tweeter is basically seeing DC voltage and you don't want to do that. You don't want to underpower your speakers. That's a topic for another video that we could do. But the bottom line is if you're going to drive four ohm loads on cheap receivers, I either recommend you use external amplification if your receiver has preamp outputs or your other option is to get a speaker Im impedance matrix switch. If you're gonna run multiple speakers across a two channel receiver, use an impedance switch. Uh, you know, it's like they're kind of outdated. They don't really do that anymore. If you're gonna run distributed audio throughout your house, you're better off using a distribution amplifier. There's companies like Triad, Martin Logan and Paradigm that do excellent, excellent eight channel, 16 channel amplifiers that'll run your whole house. That's the better way to do it. Don't try to overwork your AV receiver or your two channel receiver. I've been in a lot of installations where I've seen builders that didn't know any better. They just ran a bunch of speakers in the house and they tied them all together in parallel back to the receiver. That receiver now sees like a 0.2 ohm load. They crank that volume up, it's gonna shut it down, it's gonna cause problems. Avoid those problems. Always trust the measurements. If something sounds too good to be true, if someone's going to tout that this $100 receiver is audio nirvana, audio bliss, it's going to make your speakers open up and your mid-range more chocolatey, just realize there's a grain of salt. You have to take that with a grain of salt because there's only so much you could do on a budget. And I'm not bashing a budget product. Budget products are great for what they do, but they got to be used within the limits that they're designed for. Don't go and drive a pair of BMW Nautilus speakers on a $100 Sony receiver. You're not going to get the greatest results. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please share it, please thumb it up. Please make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you aren't already. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. You get direct access to me if you wanna ask questions. You can send us uh, topics you'd like us to discuss on YouTube. And most importantly, you help support the channel. We always appreciate that. And don't forget about our Marantz contest that's running until the end of December. We're giving away a Marantz AV7705 11 channel processor. One lucky person is going to win that. Make sure you enter. I'll put the link down below. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Hit record. Are you recording? Is it on? Are you sure? 100%? No, I'm not ready. Okay. <laughs> like my shirt? Yes, I take your shirt. Yes, yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. That old neck. Old neck injuries.